Our guest today is a physician associate that specializes in aesthetic medicine. Please help me to introduce aesthetic injector Marcella Valdez. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jonathan McLean, and I'm the founder and CEO of McLean Aesthetics. Let's go! How are you today? I'm doing well. Just working a lot, but I love it. Awesome. How are awesome. you? I'm doing good. You know, I mean, we're in Miami right now, mm -hmm. and it's sunny outside in the yes. middle of January. It's the I best love life it. You can have. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we? Tell us, tell the audience where we're at right now. Okay, so I work at Plastic Surgery Institute of Miami in Coral Gables. Um, I work with Dr. Gersey. He's an amazing surgeon. He specializes in doing rhinos and breasts, and I basically do the injectables in the office. So the Botox, the fillers, the threads, the PRP, all the fun stuff. Now that's that's super cool because I yeah. always tell injectors like the best type of environment I feel like to be in as an injector is a plastic surgery office. Oh yeah, definitely. That's just what I recommend personally. I know other people might have other advice, mm -hmm. but I recommend that. Yeah. But I know you didn't start there. No. Tell us your your story is so unique. Tell us a little bit about how you started and how you got into this industry. Okay, so then I graduated from PA school in 2019, and I had a friend who was working at a med spa, and so. He reached out to me. He told me that there was an opportunity. I didn't have any experience, but the med spa was going to pay for my training, which they did. I got hired, um, and then I trained with uh, Jacob Sanchez from Get Refresh. Best trainer out there. Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then after that, I was working there for about a year and a couple of months. I started working in a Pembroke Pines location as well called Danique Med Spa, and... Um, I worked there for a couple of months. I did a lot of Morpheus there. And then recently I took this job. So I've been here for about a month and a half. And I love it. I love the team. I love the doctor. Everything's great here. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Super cool. What are some things you look for when picking a new job or are important to look for? Uh, definitely uh, location is important, especially in the field that I'm in. You want to pick a good location where you know people will come mm -hmm. and they'll, they're, they're interested in the procedures you're offering. Uh, definitely staff. These people are the people you're going to be with more than you see your own family. So it's really important to get along with the staff in the office. Um, and also like my relationship with the doctor. That, that determines pretty much everything. That determines how independent I am and pretty much how I could do my job correctly. Yeah. So as long as my relationship with the doctor is good and we're happy, then I think it's, it's an easy, easy flow, easy adjustment to any job. Yeah, yeah, no, I mm -hmm. completely agree because I'm, I'm sure the doctor's probably training you or you yeah. guys have to have like a very extensive relationship throughout your whole career, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, so. It, it's it's worked out really nice. I've known the doctor for a couple years now, so yes. even before I was in PA school, before I started injecting, I've known him for about seven years because my best friend works here, my sister-in-law works here, so it's awesome. This is a great job. <laughs> <laughs> super cool, super cool. Yeah. I'm I'm glad you have that reaction because not yeah. everybody does. So that's yeah, really good. yeah, no, I love my job. Good, good, good. So tell us a little bit about what's trending in the market. When patients come to see you, what are they asking for? They're always asking for lip fillers. Mm -hmm. That's like the biggest thing in Miami: lip fillers and definitely Botox. Yeah, those are like the two biggest things that my patients ask for. Recently, I've been offering a lot of Morpheus, which is um, the radio frequency machine with microneedling that helps tighten the skin. It helps build collagen. So a lot of people have been asking about Morpheus now as well. So I've been doing a good amount of Morpheus, but lip fillers is like number one. Do you think like, because I see celebrities like Kim, mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian posted online. Do you think that had an influence on Morpheus kind of like blowing up? Oh, definitely. Yeah. 100%. People wouldn't know what Morpheus was if Kim Kardashian wasn't out there advertising it. Mm. Yeah, no. Morpheus is, is a game changer, a huge game changer. But thank you, Kim. She's definitely helped us out. With that one. Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely can understand. Is there anything else that you're seeing or is those are the two, the two most popular? A lot of PRP as well. So I do PRP for under eyes for darkness. So with patients who really, their main issue is darkness under their eyes, not really hollowness, I would always recommend PRP over filler. 
And so PRP has been a big one as well. And then there's the vampire facial that Kim Kardashian has also advertised. So yeah. that's with PRP as well. And I love it because it's all natural. It's your own blood. So I like to use it a lot for patients who it's their first time. They're not sure how they feel about fillers. So I'm like, okay, let's try PRP. Something a little bit more natural, not too many complications associated with it. So it's yeah. a good fit for new patients coming into this. That's super cool, super cool. And like you just said, it's your own blood, so yeah. there's no reaction to that. You're not Exactly, gonna... exactly. So there's really like relatively no complications except for just the needle po pokes, which is infection, but you can go with anything. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, working in a high-end setting like this, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have to go above and beyond for your patients. Yes. What are some things you do to kind of gain that white glove service and keep them coming back? Well, first of all, there's a lot of injectors in this industry, especially in Miami. So I think my personality definitely stands out. I'm very big on making sure my patient is happy. I follow up with all my patients after I work on them to make sure that there's no complications, no issues. I like to follow up with them in person as well, usually in two weeks. Um, so I think definitely what, what really keeps my patients, what brings my patients is how I am with them, how I treat them, I make them feel comfortable. I tell them every complication, every side effect, I answer every question that they could have. So it's about making sure that they're comfortable at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's what I do. I want to make sure that they're comfortable. I give them my best advice and yeah, they keep coming back. So something's working. <laughs> that's good. And you mentioned a good point also. You said you re-educate them, right? Yes, Education. Definitely. People feel scared where they don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Like, what is this going to do to me? Yeah. yeah, so I have a uh, pre and post procedure instructions that I give to my patients for every treatment that I do. So on there, I also have the office phone number. So if there's any any complication or anything that they're worried about, they could always call the office. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that helps a lot for sure. Definitely. Now, this industry is so big and there's so mm -hmm. many key leaders in this industry that put out so much great content. Yeah. Who are some leaders that you could recommend for the audience to maybe follow or to learn from? Um, one of my favorite injectors is Injector Bunny. Yeah. Yeah, she is like, I follow her Patreon account, so yeah. I pay pretty much $100 a month, and I get all the insider on all of her stuff, her eight-point lifts, her, in, her dermal fillers, her toxins, everything. Everything that she does, even Morpheus. So she is up there for me. Um, also, I did train with Jacob from Get Refresh, but on his Instagram, he also posts videos of himself working on people. So sometimes I'll go back to that to reference if I have a, a patient that maybe I have a question on, I'll go and I'll look at his videos. Like, let's see, he worked on this and he did this. Oh, okay, so he did it like that. So maybe I should do it like that. Yeah, because it's all about sharing, right? And learning yeah, from each other. exactly. I'm huge on that. Now, I think people forget that, right? We all learn from each other. Yes, exactly. Is it important, do you think it's important to have like a global perspective of aesthetics to learn like other... I guess, cultures or way they accept aesthetics in their way? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because what might be pretty to someone might not be their definition of pretty to someone else in a different culture. So it's definitely important to just kind of understand your patient and be able to talk to your patient and kind of focus on what your patient's needs are, what their desires are, and put away like what you technically, like what you would see as beauty and see what they're seeing as beauty in their eyes. Obviously, you give your patient advice, and at the end of the day, like, you're the injector, you're the one who's going to make the final call on anything, but I definitely like to listen to my patients. I like to take everything that they say into account, and then I like to make a, a treatment plan that will work for them, something that I know that they will enjoy when I finish. Yeah, yeah and that makes sense, right? You're communicating with them mm -hmm. and expressing, like, I hear you, and yeah. we're going to go down that journey together. Exactly. That's huge. Like, we're doing this together, a journey yeah. together. <laughs> How do you set expectations with patients so they know like what they have in their mind, they can express that to you and get it accomplished? Um, so usually, like as far as like patient expectations, um, if it's unrealistic yeah. or if it's something that I know will look too fakey, I'm very big on the natural side. I don't, I don't want someone to leave work, like getting work done with me and for yeah. people to be like, oh, you look fake. Oh, something looks off. So I'm very big on telling my patients like, hey, this might be a little too much. Let's tone it back a bit, you know. We don't want to look too fake. We want to look natural. We want to look good, you know. Especially Miami, a lot of things, a lot of people here, they tend to over-exaggerate. 
So as far as like expectations, I always try to bring them like let's let's see what what looks good. Let's try things out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't need a full syringe of lips. Sometimes a half syringe will do. Sometimes we don't need them at all. You know. Yeah. Sometimes a chin will will be what's missing. You know. So it just depends. I just talk to my patients. I walk them through it. Mm, yeah. And that's, that's a good point, too, because, like, yeah. as consumers like myself, we might be at home like, oh, I need this, I want this, I want this, and really, yeah. you just might need something else. Exactly. It just depends. Everyone is different, but, um, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, I'm sure that comes with the training in a lot of years of, like, oh, yeah, really practicing and repeating. Mm-hmm. Is there any trainings or even conferences that you can suggest to the audience that they can attend? Okay, so when I did my threads, I did my thread course with Jacob from Get Refresh. I also did it with AIAM. They were great, so I purchased the Nova threads, and then I was able to get the training with it. They were absolutely wonderful. Definitely love my trainings with Jacob. I know he has um, the Aesthetic Vision Institute now, so that's been absolutely great as well. So I definitely recommend them. And then any shadowing opportunity you can get with an injector will definitely take you over the top. So if there's someone willing to let someone shadow, take it. Take it, take it, take it. And then you 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 could learn a lot from that one person. Yeah, I always suggest the same thing, right? I feel mm-hmm. like one on one you learn a ton because you can ask oh, questions. Yeah, exactly. How would an injector kind of approach that, or what would be the right way to approach that? Um, so I get DMs. I get a couple of DMs at people asking me if they could shadow me. Um, a lot of people charge. Um, I haven't gotten to that point of charging anyone yet, just because I want to help. <laughs> you know, I do want to help, and I do try to help. People who I know, like, sincerely want to get into this industry or they want to improve in in certain areas. So if there's someone who reached out to me, a lot of times, especially if I know them, I'll tell them, like, hey, today I have this coming in, this coming in. If they're okay with you coming in and watching, then feel free to come in. Mm. You know, feel free to come into the office. Like, what do you want to learn more of? Is it toxin? Is it filler? So then I kind of tell them, like, okay, today I have this. Tomorrow I'll have that, so you can come in and watch me. Yeah, and I, I like what you said, because and also when people are coming in the shadow and injector, you want to get the skill set right and learn mm-hmm. from them. But also questions that you have about the community. Well, how do I get a job? What should I look for? Maybe yeah. how do I get male practice insurance? Stuff that you can answer mm-hmm. very easily for them. Yeah. Without, you know, really doing too much research. And I yeah. think that's also added advantage that everybody should take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do get a lot of questions, especially people trying to break into this industry, yeah. asking how. Yeah. And a lot of times, it's about who you know. Mm-hmm. It's really, like, that's what it comes down to, who you know. So you want to get out there. You want to do as many trainings as you can. You want to meet people. You want to call every aesthetic injector that you know. Ask them, hey... Could I come in? Could I shadow you? Because one of them will say yes. Yeah. You know, even if they charge you, if you're really passionate about this, pay it. It's an investment. It'll come back to you. I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. Speaking of that, can we talk a little bit about commitment? Mm-hmm. What, how much commitment you really need, I guess, to really be good in your craft? Uh, 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep and I'm thinking about injecting. Like, yeah. it's nonstop. Yeah. Um, definitely need to put in the work. So if, if I'm at work and I'm working, afterwards I'll go home and I'll watch videos. I try to watch a video every day, mm-hmm. especially on Injector Bunny's Patreon account. Yeah. I definitely try to watch at least one video a day just so that I could learn new techniques, new styles, something to just improve my practice. It's so important to just continue to learn. Continue yeah. to develop yourself as an injector. And there's always new things coming out. Why not? Exactly. Know? For exactly. sure, for sure. Can we talk about some pros and cons of the industry? You know, people coming from like urgent mm-hmm. care or a hospital setting, they're wanting to get in this industry, but I don't think they quite know what some good things are and some, you know, yeah. things they should, you know, watch out before coming in. Yeah. So I actually had a friend of mine who she came from emergency medicine and started doing aesthetics. Yeah. And the stigma is like, oh, it's going to be chill, it's laid back, I'm not so worried about things. But then it's like, oh, vascular occlusion, someone could go blind. There is a whole set of other complications that could happen. So I think people think that it's like a cushy job, that you don't need to worry too much, and that nothing could really go wrong. And there is a lot that could go wrong. Mm -hmm. A lot could go wrong, especially if you don't know the anatomy, especially if you don't take the time to do the trainings. 
there's a lot that could go wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the stigma behind people trying to get into this field. They think it's more relaxing and calming, which I love it. But with any field, you're going to have your set of complications. Yeah. What are some pros that you can say that you love about this industry? Oh, I mean, everything. <laughs> um, some pros is that the patients are awesome. Uh, the patients are genuinely trying to get that self-confidence, that that feel better about themselves. So it's a nice, it's nice when you have a patient and you work on them and then they're crying to you because they feel so happy because they haven't felt that beautiful or they have, it was like an insecurity that you helped them with. So that to me is number one, patients being happy after you work on them. So that's definitely a pro. Yeah. And the lifestyle as well. I mean, I work nine to five, Monday through Friday. I don't need to work overnight. I don't need to work weekends. I know some people do. Yeah. In this field, some people definitely do work weekends, but it's nice. For me, it's it's a nice nine to five. I could then afterwards go to the gym or do whatever I have to do. I could cook dinner. I'm not getting home at midnight at two, three in the morning. So it's a good work life balance. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And you meet really cool people in this industry too. That is very true. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are treating in like athletes or the most yeah. high influential people in the mm -hmm. world because this is the best type of healthcare you can get. I yeah. feel like you know what I mean? It's Definitely. private pay. So I'm sure you meet amazing people. Yeah, I meet like really cool people every day and then it's cool like to even like bounce back with patients and then they tell you their stories yeah. and their life and you get like these cool new perspectives on everyone it's it's, it's a great job i yeah, love this for sure i can't picture myself doing anything except this <laughs> <laughs> what are some do you think misconceptions are still relevant in the aesthetic industry today like misconceptions that about kind of like getting botox or getting filler oh or, yeah. yeah people think if you get botox you're gonna look scary and it's like that's not that's not it. <laughs> like, I have Botox, you know, and people would never be able to tell, you know. So I think um, there is definitely still the misconception, especially back in the day, people used to overdo it. They used to overdo fillers, they used to overdo Botox. So I think now, a lot of people are walking around amongst us that have filler, Botox, threads, and no one can tell, mm -hmm. which I love. Because that's that's the look that I want to achieve. That's the look I want my patients to achieve. Yeah. How has social media changed the game? Oh, completely. Social media is my portfolio. That's how people could see my work through social media, which I'm terrible at. I need to get better at my social media game. But yeah, no, social media in this industry is huge. Because at the end of the day, people want to see those befores and afters. They want to see your personality shine through they want to know who they're going that will be touching their face or will be injecting them so you can do that through social media you reach people all over the united states all over the world through social media yeah so people hear about you and they want to come to you because they feel like they know you they have this personal connection to you so social media is huge it's very important yeah do you feel like you have to share a lot on there? Do people have to know you a lot to come and see you? What's the balance of like really how much you have to share? I mean, I personally want to share gotcha. with people. I want them to see me. I want them to get to know me. I want them to know who's injecting them, who's the person behind the befores and afters. Because you could form, you, you form a bond with your patient. You form um, this relationship with them. So you get to really... When you talk to your patients, you really get to know them. You really get to know what they want, what exactly their needs are. So it, it makes you a better injector doing yeah. that, going above and beyond and really getting to know your patients. Yeah. And for patients that are new to this industry and are interested in trying it, mm -hmm. could you tell us like maybe three simple skincare tips that they can try out? Oh, sunscreen, number one. We saw Ulta MD sunscreen here and it's tinted and... It looks like as if you have foundation on and it's just sunscreen. Definitely sunscreen. Retinol is also amazing and vitamin C. So I really highly recommend the CE for lick acid from SkinCeuticals. That vitamin C serum is life changing. But those those are like my three go-tos. I mean, I have more. Yeah. I'm very sensitive with my skincare. Like I also love hyaluronic acid and different things, but definitely sunscreen is number one. That's the number one anti-aging thing you can do without it being invasive, without having to ingest or anything. Definitely sunscreen. Yeah. 
to start the sunscreen early. You heard it yes. here first, yes. for sure, for Definitely. sure. But thank you so much for sitting down with me and speaking more yeah, about no the aesthetic problem. industry. Tell everybody where they can find you and what you got planned next. Awesome. So I am here in Plastic Surgery Institute of Miami in Coral Gables. We will actually be having having an event February 2nd from 4.30 to 8 p.m. Basically introducing the aesthetics department and we're going to be giving 20 to 25% off for anyone who attends. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great event. So you guys are all more than welcome to come. Super cool. Come check it out. Come check it out. And until next time, bye. Bye.